Welcome to the Leadership Intelligence Podcast. Today we'll be taking a look at the DecisionWise 2017 Employee Engagement Driver Benchmark Results. My name is Charles Rogel, and I am the Vice President of Products and a Senior Consultant for DecisionWise. So we're going to answer this question, where do employees find the most meaning, autonomy, growth, impact, and connection in their jobs? What we did is we looked at the latest employee engagement survey results for employees in 11 different industry categories to find out. So let me tell you a little bit about this study. DecisionWise conducts employee engagement surveys with hundreds of companies around the world. And each year, we update our rolling three-year global benchmark database with the results from the previous year. So this year, we're talking about results from 2015 to 2017. Then those results are broken out by question and themes into 11 common industry categories. Each question includes results from 152 to 307 companies, which includes thousands of employees and millions of employee survey responses. So let me give you a quick rundown of the industry, these 11 industries that we that we compared to. And, and we'll touch on these as we go through the results. So first one's technology, then there's manufacturing, services, which is more general services like equipment maintenance, distributors, and so on, healthcare, finance, nonprofit, like charitable, uh, charitable organizations or membership organizations, restaurant slash hospitality, professional services like law firms and engineering firms, government, utilities, and finally, transportation. So based on over 20 years of research and thousands of employee engagement surveys with companies around the world, we distilled the drivers of employee engagement into five distinct topics, and those are meaning, autonomy, growth, impact, and connection. Now, as we go through this research, I'll describe to you which each of those mean, but what we find is that those items, those, those concepts, are the items that really drive employee engagement in organizations. And we measure these concepts on our employee engagement surveys to provide an engagement profile for each company. So organization scores vary significantly. For example, a technology consulting firm probably scores or would probably score very high on autonomy-related questions, while a government agency who operates within strict policies and procedures, those employees experience less autonomy. So let's talk about the first item, which is meaning. The way we measure meaning on our employee surveys is with this question. It says, my job provides me with a sense of meaning and purpose. Now, when we look at this um, for this particular study, we're looking at all the responses where people said agree or strongly agree to that question. The average score, the global score for agree and strongly agree was 64%. So again, my job provides me a sense uh, with a sense of meaning and purpose. The top scoring industry for this category is technology at 71%. That's above the 64% global average. Next is somewhat surprising. Well, let me talk on uh, technology first. Technology is not so surprising because what we find is within technology firms, typically those employees have a lot of latitude or, or find, I guess, a lot of meaning in the work that they're doing. They're seeing how they're um, their work impacts uh, the world, um, and they find meaning in, in kind of the work and the type of um, products that they're producing. Manufacturing was number two at 66%, so it was just above the global benchmark, quite lower than the technology benchmark at 71%, so technology kind of beat everyone by a, by a long shot. But I was surprised to see that manufacturing was number two because typically, again, We're talking about employees who are doing more maybe menial work, repetitive work. And so I wouldn't expect to find those employees uh, to have as much meaning in their job as the results show. Uh, As we go down the the line, healthcare, which I thought would have a significant amount of more meaning, came in at 63%, which again was one point below the global average. And then the last uh, industries in our benchmark here were government and utility at 60% and 56% respectively. That I'm not surprised about because, again, in government or utility, municipalities, things like that, employees typically don't find too much meaning in their work. Um, they're, again, heavily, um, heavily regulated. There's a lot of policies and procedures to follow. And so sometimes it, it, it makes it difficult for employees to truly find um, meaning and purpose in the jobs that they do. So let's go on to the, the next item, which is um, autonomy. And the way we measure autonomy is with this item. It's I have the freedom to choose how to best perform my job. 
And so the average here was much higher. In fact, autonomy scored the highest out of our global benchmark database at 77% agree or strongly agree. That's compared to 64% for meaning. So the highest scoring industry uh, for autonomy was professional services. So we're talking about law firms, uh, engineering firms, uh, consulting firms, things like that. They scored 82% uh, agree or strongly agree on that particular item compared to the global benchmark, which was 77%. So they were way higher than all the rest of the, uh, than the global benchmark in many of the other categories. The next one in line was technology at 80%. Healthcare came in at 77%, and so did nonprofits and services. So again, they, in these industries, they're, they're, this is where they're finding the most autonomy to actually perform their job. Those with the least amount of autonomy or the lowest scores would be transportation at 72%, manufacturing at 73%, and then government and utilities at 74 and 75%. Not too surprising there. Again, those areas are more regulated, a lot of uh, procedures and guidelines to follow, and so there's not a lot of autonomy in terms of how you actually perform your job. Let's go to the third item. This is where we talk about growth. Now, growth is different than uh, getting a promotion or advancement in an organization. Growth is about feeling challenged and stretched in your job in a way that results in personal growth. So that's the question that we ask. When we look at the average score, the global score for growth, um, those that responded agree and strongly agree were 70% overall in our database. The two highest scoring industries that tied at 73% were healthcare and technology. So again, technology has a lot of high scores so far. They're in the top one or two industries as we look at this data. Um, and then nonprofits came in at third and professional services came in at third at 72% each. Those industries that experienced the least amount of growth are restaurant and hospitality at 64% and manufacturing at 65%. Again, the global average was 70% for this growth category. Uh, so not too surprised to see manufacturing and restaurant and hospitality low at, at, um, on growth. Uh, there's not a lot of training, lot, not a lot of professional development that goes on in those industries. However, in healthcare, people need to constantly hone their skills as well as technology. People are, uh, that industry is constantly changing, so the need for continued growth and skill development. The fourth driver we'll talk about uh, is uh, impact. And so the way we measure impact is with this item. It says, most days I feel like I'm making progress on important work projects or initiatives. The uh, global benchmark is 72%, so a little bit lower than the other areas, kind of in the middle in terms of the other, um, the other uh, engagement drivers. The, uh, there was a tie for first place, a three-way tie for first place under impact, and that was between healthcare, nonprofit organizations, and transportation. So it was interesting to see transportation. They were typically at the bottom of the list. Those employees are feeling a lot of impact on the work that they do. So again, these are employees that feel like they're contributing or their work is contributing to the success of the organization. Uh, they feel like they get things done. Maybe they're being recognized for the work that they're doing. Now, the two industries that were lowest um, compared to the global benchmark at 72% were manufacturing at 67% and restaurant and hospitality at 66%. So again, these employees don't feel like the work that they're doing um, is, is really helping them feel like they're making progress on important work projects or initiatives. Again, when you look at those industries, it's more repetitive. Um, it's more of a service-oriented industry, especially with restaurants. And so it's difficult to kind of feel impact from your work. Now, the fifth and final driver of employee engagement is connection. The way we measure connection is with one simple statement, I feel like I belong here. When we look at our global average, it's, it's higher than most. It's 76%, higher than most of the other categories. And there's another three-way tie for first place here, and that's between healthcare, services, and technology at 77% each. Um, the lowest scoring item or lowest scoring industry here is manufacturing at 72%. So most of these industries, again, 70% or above, manufacturing is lowest, um, but you, I would expect to see um, higher levels of connection among healthcare services and technology. 
So uh, connection, though, is a little bit different. So we measure connection. That, that question takes a lot of things in, into consideration. It's not just the social connection. It's also feeling connected to the work you're probably doing or the organization itself if you're connected to the mission and values of the organization. So that's why we use the statement, I feel like I can belong here to measure connection. So what does this mean in terms of engagement overall? Which industry shows the highest level of employee engagement? Based on the average score of a validated set of employee engagement anchor questions, we rank ordered industries from the, le the most to least engaged uh, in 2017. Now, the highest um, industry was professional services at 81% engaged. Now, engaged, we actually break people into four categories. We have our fully engaged group, our key contributor group, an opportunity group, and then a fully disengaged group. And when we look at overall engagement or this employee engagement index, we're looking at those that are fully engaged and also in that key contributor group. For the most part, that's the majority of the employees in an organization. So professional services as an industry scored relatively high with 81% in those top two groups. Finance came in second at 80.7%, so just barely behind professional services. Technology was third at 79.5%. The lowest scoring industry was manufacturing at 76.2%, uh, followed by, well, and just above that was restaurant and hospitality at 77%. So you can see how um, a lot of these, uh, these factors, these drivers go into also contributing to the overall level of engagement. Now, the interesting thing we find in our research is that you do not have to score well on all of these drivers to have high engagement within your organization. These drivers sometimes determine uh, or largely determine the culture of your organization. So are you an organization that has an autonomous culture where people um, value having the freedom to do their, their job in the way they see, uh, best see fit? Or do you have a, a culture that's really high on impact where you're results driven and people are really engaged by um, achieving results and being recognized for their efforts? These things go in to help determine which of these engagement drivers uh, really resonate with your culture and can help you boost engagement overall within your company. We've seen some companies that score low on uh, one or two of these drivers, but score high on others and have really good engagement scores. It just depends on the, the culture of your organization. So as a leader, as an HR professional, as you're thinking about what do these results mean for my organization, my advice is to look at the culture of your organization and what are your true values? What would employees say this organization is all about? Is it about connection? Is it about uh, growth opportunities and adding bullet points to a resume? Is it about meaning and purpose? In other words, you're, you, you have a higher um, purpose in terms of what you're trying to do as an organization. And key in on those, um, those drivers that are really important to your organization and try to leverage those to boost employee engagement. When people understand that there's a clear vision, a clear culture, a clear and clear expectations, they're more likely to engage in their work. So that's my presentation today. I want to thank everyone for joining me on this, um, this podcast. And we look forward to having you join us on a future podcast where we'll reveal more engagement data from our 2017 employee engagement survey results. Thanks, everybody.